lands on the North Umbrian coast, where new companion Stephen discovers a Viking helmet, and the doctor deduces they must have arrived in the 11th century. Stephen remains skeptical, especially when he and Vicky encounter what appears to be a Saxon hun uh, hunter with a modern wristwatch. Investigating a monastery, the doctor discovers further an anachronisms. Who is the, this, the mysterious monk observing the time traveler's every move? And why is he so interested in the outcome of the Battle of Hastings? <clears throat> the Time Meddler is, as another critic put it, a delight. It has a great pace, an excellent story, and plenty of good humor. First off, Stephen Taylor from the previous serial, The Chase, is found on the TARDIS and is welcome aboard as a companion. Throughout this, this serial, we get a better examination of Stephen. He is not really a hothead, but a tough, independent, and smart person who can lead, lead when the Doctor is not around, someone who I'm sure will question a lot of subject matter in future serials. He won't really undermine or put into question the Doctor's leadership or correctness of his historical settings or anything in science, but will question on certain matters because he will either know about it, or ask the right questions as to why something will happen, or what it is, or where they are. So far, Stephen seems like a great replacement to Ian and Barbara. The character of the monk, and will only be known as the monk, is at first a mystery, but soon, evidence piles up and you realize that the monk is, spoiler alert, a Time Lord. And the monk has a TARDIS that has a working camouflage. The best parts of the serial are the scenes involving the Doctor and the monk. The bickering that goes on between them on the subject of changing the course of history. The monk wants to change the outcome on the Battle of Hastings because he believes changing it will make the future better for humanity. But the doctor reminds him of the golden rule, never interfere, interfere with the course of history. It is, a sim it is a similar to the prime directive in Star Trek. But the monk believes he is doing right and is doing all he can to complete his plans, even using modern weaponry. But the monk plans fail. The Doctor sabotages the monk's TARDIS by removing the dimensional controller, causing the bigger on the inside to be smaller on the inside, thus sta stranding the monk there in 1066. The actor who played the monk, let's see, where the actor who played the monk was quite a joy as well as I liked how he played him, and he he and William Hartnell and I liked how, I liked how he played him and how he and William Hartnell played off each other in the scenes. It was such fun. The monk does return in another serial, Dalek's Master Plan, where the monk fixes his TARDIS and chases after the doctor to get have his revenge, only to eventually get lost materializing on an icy planet and realize he can no longer control the destination of his TARDIS, much like the doctor and his TARDIS. And this is due to more tampering by the doctor. Unfortunately, nine episodes of the Dalek's Master Plan is still missing and not available as a whole for commercial release. However, the character does appear in Doctor Who radio dramas. In future Doctor Who episodes, and I'm talking about the revival episode, uh, the revival series that is on air right now, I hope we see the monk again. The monk is basically what the Doctor could have been wandering around space and time. The monk is a great mirror image of the Doctor, but then again, and so is the Master. But we'll get to that character in future episodes, future and uh, in the future. Mm -hmm. With this being the first serial without Ian and Barbara, we can see how they had effect had an effect on the dark on the Doctor. We started to see a change in the Doctor in the serial The Edge of Destruction, when we see the Doctor learn that he is rude at times and becomes more friendly. And now we see him becoming more responsible and in charge of the problem at hand, like Ian and Barbara were in previous serials. They would get things they get things together and solve the problem more than the Doctor. Now it is reversed. Although I'm sure future commands will share in that. And we now begin to see the Doctor as he is now. Lovable, adventurous, witty, kind, and a hero. There was little much with historical events, but I'm sure someone who has more knowledge on the events leading to the Battle of Hastings will see if the serial is historically accurate or not. But much like the other historical serial, serials of Doctor Who, even if there are inaccuracies, it will still be a great serial and a joy to watch. I give the serial four and a half stars out of five. Unfortunately, after this, there is a gap of missing serials between this one and the next one available as a whole on DVD. 
But the next serial I am going to review is a missing serial, and a condensed version is available on one of the DVDs using still photographs, surviving audio, and what surviving episodes the BBC have in the archives. It is similar to what they did with the Marco Polo serial that is still missing. The Time Meddler is the end of the second series of the classic era of Doctor Who, and more great adventures are to come. Thank <laughs> you.